Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here from The Automator, and I'm talking with Jean Alon, the author of Quick Access Pop-Up. It's an amazing efficiency tool if you haven't used it. But um, Jean, the other day on one of our live Friday calls, had an issue with his um, API slash class for controlling Spotify, and that's what we're going to talk about today, is how to connect and control Spotify. And if you stick around to the end, you're going to see some really cool stuff that you can do with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, with this class, that you, it allows you to create hotkeys that would control Spotify doing things like uh, start, play, uh, increase the volume, you know, these things and uh, much more. So we can first see maybe if you want to have an example of uh, what it can do in Spotify. Let me share my screen. So here in the background, you have the script and you see we have odd keys, F1, F2, uh, F3 that do various things and here that's the, the Spotify window. And you will see here, you know, the, the, this text here will show which button I'm pressing just to show you the effect of this button. So I will first press the F1 key. The F1 key will decrease the volume. So you see the volume here. So if I press F1, it, it decreases the volume. I can press multiple times. I could press F2 to increase the volume. And the other uh, key, for example, F3 is toggling the shuttling mode. So I'm pressing F3 and you see the dot and that appears here showing that the shuttle mode is, is enabled or disabled when I press F3. F4 is doing the same with the repeat mode. There so, are three states. Repeat one thing. Yeah. Let me chime in here because some people may not understand exactly what we're doing here, right? Because Often what we demonstrate on this channel is how to automate a given GUI in our program. In this tool, we're connecting to an API to the, the server and sending those commands. The GUI is reflecting the change, right? But you're not yeah. actually connecting to this application, which yeah. is really cool because that way it doesn't have to be visible, right? It doesn't have to be yeah, active. It doesn't send out keys or keys right. to the, the front end, to the client software. It is sending commands to the Spotify server, and these commands are reflected in um, in the player. I could have two players at the same time, one using an application and, and the other one in the browser, and a third one on my mobile, on my iPhone, and the changes I would do with the API would be reflected simultaneously on the three tools that I'm using to listen my music at the same time if I was doing it. So that's really, we are not talking to this client window here. We are talking to the server, to Spotify itself. Very cool. And so if I play a tune here, you will see that F5 will uh, play the next track. You see the image changing here so that we move to the next track and F6 will move to the previous track. So that's the kinds of thing that you can do uh, to control your players, cool. uh, your Spotify players, and, and other things. And the reason why I explored this was to uh, to export data from my uh, uh, Spotify account, to export playlists to a CSV file. So that's the kind of thing that, uh, that we can do using a class that I found on GitHub, that I found on the net, that you can download to do these things. Yeah, I put the URL, if you go here, it'll it'll redirect you to the, the URL that he's got at his, where he got it from. Yeah. Yep. So uh, do you want me to just jump in, maybe in the code that is doing that? Sure, yeah. Okay, so there's this um, class here, spotify.ehk, from a user, a uh, developer called uh, Cloaker Smoker. And there's a very good documentation here that details what the class can do to talk to the to the API. Uh, what you have to do is to create an instance of this class. So that's what the new command is doing here. Then there's a few uh, variables that will be used. And there's an increment. When you change the volume, it will increase the volume by 5% at each time you click the F1 or F2 keys. But you can change this increment if you wish. And the next command here is really the one that is getting information from uh, Spotify, from your current playback information. And it will retrieve this in an object here. And in this object, you can look at information, for example, like the volume of the device, uh, the shuffle state, the repeat state, 
And so what it's done in the um, initiation of this group is to get some information about the current state of uh, your player. And then it's ready to execute one of the other keys that you can press. And if you press F1, it will, if the volume is not already at zero, it will decrease the volume by 5%. That's what is done here. And it will set this new volume using the command player set volume with the percentage that you uh, that we have here. So all this is done using the O Spotify uh, object, which is an instance, an instance, an instance of the. Um, let me come back here of the Spotify class. So we use set volume. We use set shuffle. Set repeat mode. We use player next track, player last tracks. All these commands are implemented into this class here, which is the file that you can download from uh, the file and our library files that the, the, the set of files that you have to download that will um, execute these commands. Here is the Spotify class. So that's uh, quite easy to implement. It was uh, it worked for this command the first time I used it. It worked as is. I had a little issue, as we mentioned at the beginning, when I wanted to export. So what I want to do, for example, is to let me return here. So we have a playlist here, uh, and I would like to export. There are how many tracks? There are 50 tracks, maybe. Yeah, there are 50 tracks in th this place. This is a playlist that is generated, created by Spotify, an automatic intelligent uh, playlist, if you wish. Not one that I created, but what I can show you now is how to download the list of tracks of a playlist, regardless if it is one of your playlists or one from, from Spotify or one from any user that has public playlists. So what all you need to do here is to get the ID of this playlist. And to get that, you click here. It's in French, but I translate. You click share and copy the link to this playlist. Mm -hmm. OK, so in my clipboard, I now have this, uh, this, playlist ID. Yeah. this ID. I'm opening a small tool that shows what in the clipboard. And I can edit that to retrieve the playlist ID that is this um, piece of code here. So I'll just remove that and remove what's after that, save it to my clipboard. So now I have this ID in my clipboard. And what I will do is I will copy here this uh, paste, this, it was already there, this ID to as a parameter to a command that I wrote here, to a function that I wrote here. So if I start from the beginning here, it, it, it includes the Spotify library uh, class. It also import the object CSV class or uh, library that I will use later to save the content of the playlist to a CSV file. I'm instantiating the Spotify class here. And um, I'm creating a, a, an object that will contain the list that, are, that will be downloaded from from um, Spotify. And here, this function will take the content of this playlist that has this name. And there's a second one here. So this function is receiving the ID and it is sending the ID here to the get playlist tracks uh, method from the, the Spotify class. Actually, this method is in a new version of the class that I just sent to the developer who did that, because the, the default uh, get playlist command that he had in the class only downloads the first 100 tracks from a playlist. That's the default value uh, that you can retrieve. So I implemented uh, um, an augmented version of this uh, method that will be able to download larger playlists. So that's what you have here. So at first, you maybe uh, will put a, a, a link or a, in the YouTube comments maybe to just notify that this new version is available with this get playlist tracks method. 
And what it's doing is getting the playlist in an object here, and it is looping in the object here to create a new track object and add this new track object to my output object, okay? At the end, I can have hundreds of tracks in this, um, in this object. For each track, I will have the artist's name, uh, the album name, uh, the playlist name, the, the URL of Spotify, so you could use that also to listen to a song using these URLs. So, and there, there are much more information that you can get here if you look at the API that you could also retrieve. And at the end, this will be sent to a CSV file using this object CSV collection to CSV method that will create a file that containing all these, uh, these tracks here. So I will run this. Let me just save it first. Okay. So it's it's downloading the two the two playlists and it is launching here a tool that is just reading the CSV file. And you see that I'll maximize that. You see here the two playlists that I downloaded. And you have the artist name, album name, title, and any other information that you could wish to have. The duration here is in seconds. Your first you could convert it to minutes and seconds. The S I S R C, which is the ID of the of the of the song and the URL of the song. So all this is now saved in a CSV file that you could retrieve in Excel or any other tool that you may wish to. Um, to use to to process this information so that's how you can uh, export data from spotify cool. and it could be extended to also download from albums if you wish to download the tracks from an album but it's mostly for playlists that you could have interest to do that my goal doing that is that i have about 20 playlists and i wanted to have a global view to my playlist so by downloading the CSV data for, for each of these playlists, I can import all this in Excel and I have a global view on my playlists. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, and just to clarify, because one thing people might have been a little confused at, the that last GUI you showed, um, it it's that's your tool that takes a CSV file and opens it and you are just parsing it. It's it's the point is yeah. it, the data was a CSV file, but I'm like, no one there are no commas yeah. in there. Right, but that's, yeah, that's a CSV body uh, yeah. application. We could just look at the file here. That's the CSV file itself. With you're not that sharing is, anymore, uh, right? semicolon delimited. That's yeah. the other. Want to share your uh, screen if you're going to show it? Oh, I stopped sharing. Yeah. Yeah, we uh we've covered so the couple of those tools which which you didn't mention were actually yours, which is awesome. Right, don't get me wrong. Is the, your uh. You had your your QAC tool, which I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the actually still the, out of beta which is yet? still in development, not okay, yeah. not much, uh, not ready to be yeah. fully released. Yeah, right your, now your, your but, object yeah. Is CSV is that's also, and then the CSV, CSV body, body for, is yeah. yeah, CSV body is a client that is using the object CSV library that we used here, uh, that we use here to download it to a CSV file. So it shows the file, but we could look at it in the text editor like this, right. and you see here the header and all the the songs that we have in these two lists. Yeah, and just because I know, like you said, I know your um, your native language is French, so it's UTF-8 format. Is that right? That yes, means... by default. Uh, by default, uh, the the Spotify playlist uh, or, or API is returning JSON file, mm -hmm. a kind of uh, structured data file that is saved in uh, UTF-8. Cool. So that way you get all the accentuated letter uh, OK. Yeah, so... Um, special character. Yeah, t tell us in the com comments here, you know, what, what did you like most about this? What did you learn the most? Um, have you played with APIs before? Do you use the Spotify API? Now, I, I don't... Actually, I have so much music on my computer that I don't even stream it, but... Um, I'll say what is really cool because years ago I used to do that, Sean. And what was really cool was using um, I forget what one it was, but it it was a, an AI type tool that I kept liking and disliking songs. And over time, I built this 
amazing playlist of music, mm -hmm. but I didn't have an easy way to extract those songs. So I, cause often I didn't know who the artist was. Right. And so what's really cool is you can learn about other, you know, musicians and types of music that you like, but maybe you don't know who they are. Right. And this tool you just showed, it's a great way to be able to extract that list and look at them. Right. To see. Yeah. Before using Spotify, I, like I'm doing now, I, I was a big user of iTunes. Mm. And um, I, I did some tools to extract data from iTunes. You're creating an API for iTunes. There's, so, but now there's so many, so much more music, and I cannot download everything in my iTunes. So I finally, because I was, I have 30,000 songs in, uh, in iTunes. Um, but uh, there's so much more new music available on Spotify that I made the switch to it. Or Tidal, I'm also subscribed to Tidal, which is another uh, music platform. It is very good with higher quality of sound. If cool. You, uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard of that one, but anyway, that's awesome. So, uh, mm -hmm. thanks thanks, Sean, for the overview. Uh, it, it, APIs are amazing. I got a lot of videos on that. And if you're not used to classes, this URL above me here, it's a link to our objects course which uh, you learn objects in classes and a deep dive into them because classes are crazy powerful, right? You Did you, I'm assuming you initially extended Cloaker Smokers class and then and then you decided to push back your suggestions? Yeah, I, I created a copy, if you wish, add, add two functions or two methods in it. Uh -huh. And I just submitted to, uh, to the developer right. and let's see, it will probably be available uh, oh. soon on, on its repository. And if not, I will update the, in the comments of this YouTube uh, video. I can add links well, if it has to be elsewhere. I put it. In. Awesome. Well, thank you, John. That was a very interesting um, overview. Bye. Oh, like and subscribe if you if you like this video. Thank you.